chat a minute to come in here. Look, I got the chat in its own window now. I'll probably make it like the same size as me. Yeah, that's good. Well, that'll make me, you know, my own will move me. I wanna make me that big. So I cover the chat and then there we go. We have slightly less screen area to work with, uh, but it should be nice uh, for you guys. Um, so if you recall where we were, uh, scheme in Haskell 48 hours. So we're going to need to write the section on mutable state, and that's what we're going to do today. Oh, I have a few other things that I want to discuss with you guys here on the George Hotz Twitch stream. I'm out of tea, so there's no tea, so it's only water tonight. Uh, we'll wait for some people to come in to the chat. And I have a date uh, at 8 o'clock. Uh, so we're just going to have to, you know, text at like 7.15 and be like, we still good for 8. Uh, where are you? Hello? So I assume data IO ref is it. Oh, mutable reference is in the I.O. monad. I don't know how I feel about that. Why does it have to be in the I.O. monad? Hello. Good day. Oh, we have subscriber only chat on. Uh, we can turn that off for now, I think, yeah. Uh, also, okay, so we have a few things to discuss before the stream starts. Um, I applied to be a Twitch partner. So uh, we'll see if they accept me or not. Um, if they accept me, then I'll be a Twitch partner. And just like the way, I want to show you guys my, my Instagram. You know, after I got 10,000 followers, I promised on my LinkedIn that I would make higher quality content for you guys. And you can see really like around here, you know, like moving up, moving up from like even these three. Look at these last six pictures. They're very high quality. Uh, cold, cold water, welcome. First time joining the stream. Uh, I also want to give a shout out uh, to Pokimane. Uh, Pokimane is great. Uh, I, I watched a bunch of videos on that drama. I couldn't sleep like two nights ago. And I watched three hours of videos uh, on the Pokimane, Pokimane, Pokimane drama. And then I actually watched her stream and I'm like, damn, you know, her Twitch streams are better than mine. Um, and that's why, are you like the desk picture? And that's why uh, I, you know, I always aspire to be more because uh, you should always aspire to, to, to be more. Um, what is my Instagram? It's Instagram.com slash George Hots. Please follow me. Um, it's my dream in life to have a blue check mark and to be a Twitch partner because these are things that people work their whole life towards and I'd like to just do them easily. Pokimane, yo. Um, uh, no, I didn't prepare a test for you guys. I'm sorry. There's no test. Uh, maybe for the next one. We'll see. If tomorrow I'm not lazy. I did prepare a section of this book that I wanted to read to you guys. Um, I finished my book. I finished my, uh, my, my, my white noise book. I got a new book and I'll, I'll show you what the new book is. Um, but yeah, let me, let me just, so you guys can see me. Yeah, yeah. My, my book, white noise, I, I finished it, it's over. Um, Ah. Do you believe life without death is somehow incomplete? How could it be incomplete? Death is what makes it incomplete. Doesn't our knowledge of death make life more precious? What good is a preciousness based on fear and anxiety? It's an anxious, quivering thing. True. The most deeply precious things are those that we feel secure about. A wife, a child. Does the specter of death make a child more precious? No. 
No, then there's no reason to believe life is more precious because it is fleeting. Here's a statement. A person has to be told he's going to die before he can begin to live life to the fullest. True or false? False. Once your death is established, it becomes impossible to live a satisfying life. Would you prefer to know the, own, the, date, the exact date and time of your death? Absolutely not. It's bad enough to fear the unknown. Faced with the unknown, we can pretend it isn't there. Exact dates would drive many to suicide, if only to beat the system. We crossed an old highway bridge, screened in, littered with sad and faded objects. We followed a footpath along a creek, approached the edge of the high school playing field. Women brought small children here to play in the long jump pits. How do I get around it? I said. You could put your faith in technology. It got you here. It can get you out. This is the whole point of technology. It creates an appetite for immortality on the one hand. It threatens universal extinction on the other. Technology is lust removed from nature. That's this morning's. I don't want to know the date of my death. Um, well, no. What if you're told you have a different date? Uh, yeah, base transhumanist, right? No, my, my, the new novel I'm reading uh, is this. Uh, yeah, that's, this is the next thing I'm, I'm reading. Um, the Corrections. Uh, I don't know that much about it, but I know that this guy, you know, uh, in 2001, he, it was chosen as like an Oprah book club book. And the author was like, eh, I don't really want that, you know, because people are going to see that on the cover of my book. And then they're going to think my book is like for women, you know, because all those Oprah books are for women. And there was uproar and controversy. So I'm like, you know, it's actually probably a pretty good book. Um, Dr. Disrespect is back on YouTube live. Uh, no, you know, I think I think it was a, a really bad business move on Twitch's part, um, the way they handled that whole situation. Uh, I don't think it's very smart to um you, you can rule with a uh you can rule using fear right so so what that does is creates fear in the mind of other streamers like am i doing something that might violate the code of conduct uh by not saying what dr disrespect did or why he was banned um but the only rulers that usually rule with fear are rulers who are insecure in their power um, I can't imagine that Twitch is possibly insecure in their power over the bits that are coming through their own uh, thing. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's gotten a lot of streamers to think about a backup plan, to think about, you know, first Twitch came for whoever, and then I didn't do nothing, and then Twitch came for Dr. Disrespect, and I didn't do nothing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that was a really bad business move for Twitch. But, hey, you know, I'm not Twitch. I'm just here to enjoy the decline, boys. Enjoy the decline. Uh, enjoy the decline. That's a coded incel thing. You can't say that, man. You can't say that on Twitch. This is a family-friendly streaming channel. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let's get to programming. Um... Oh, so I'll show you guys the other thing I've been playing. This is more programming related. Uh, it's this thing called refinement types. I think I finally understand intuitively what, why you can't build the thing that I want to build in Python. Why backspace can't really work in Python. Um, so the thing that I really want to build is an equality operator for functions. Uh, now, of course, you know, this can't work all the time. Uh, because of the halting problem, uh, but it can work often enough. Only famous people can find problems that are hard to decide. Oh, speaking of speaking of famous people and famous problems, there was a, oh there was a proof that NP equals RP recently, but it was it was pulled. Um, so uh, oh, I also I wrote a blog post today, but I'm not happy enough with it, so I don't think I'm actually going to publish it anywhere. But um. I'll, I'll go through it with you guys because it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, if I was going to write a blog, I'd call it like the singularity is nearer. Uh, you know, so make it fun of Ray Kurzweil. Uh, I wrote this, I wrote this thing on money creation. Um, uh, consider a mining town. 
Once upon a time, it was a mine, and the mine was the largest employer in the town. They mined copper ore and sold it on the global market. This brought money into the town, which sprouted a restaurant, a real estate broker, a doctor's office, and a church. Uh, although these people weren't employed by the mine, meaning the employees of these things, uh, they got customers from the miners, who fundamentally got money from outside the town. But eventually, the mine dried up. The miners lost their jobs, since the town was no longer bringing in enough money to pay them. Uh, the doctor, the realtor, the waiter were still employed, as their mines didn't dry up. But their mines did, as they were really just mining the miners. The town persisted for a bit, passing the same money around in a circle, but with each pass, there was a transaction fee. There's always a transaction fee. Uh, and there were still things like food, which needed to be imported into the town. The town went broke, died, and became a ghost town. Um, so I do this little analysis of like, you can break all jobs down into three groups. Um, you have jobs that don't create uh, any wealth. Uh, shoe shiners, bank tellers, politicians, retail workers, clergy, social media managers, lawyers, the service industry. This even includes things like truck drivers who really just move things from point A to point B. Um, an economy made up of only these people wouldn't work uh, because, I mean, you can't just, you know, someone has to create the value, right? Where does money come from? Uh, and I don't mean the literal answer involving the Fed or involving the mint function, the ERC-20 contract. Uh, I mean, wh where does like wealth or value come from? Um, the second group produces money linearly, so breaking jobs down into three groups. Uh, farmers, miners, manufacturers, how, how many uh, widgets did you make, how many bushels of apples did you grow, how many tons of copper ore did you extract, uh, if you're a power plant operator, how many uh, kilowatt hours of power did you generate. Uh, so this is the, the linear group, and this is the group that can sustain an economy by itself. Uh, this is kind of the bedrock of, uh, of any economy. Um, the third group uh, seeks efficiency improvements for the second. This is scientists and engineers, um, scientists who genetically engineer crops to get more yield per acre, uh, engineers who build tractors instead of ox drawn plows. Uh, this group can't sustain an economy alone, but mixing a few of them in with the second group yields much higher uh, per capita money creation, uh, more money created per, per individual in the society. Now, you, you need kind of a mix of, of two and three, and you probably need a lot more twos than threes. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, the share of the labor force working in agriculture. Uh, it's plummeted. And what I kind of wanted to look at, so agriculture is clearly in the second group. Um, the third group has this exponential effect. Way back in the day, if you go back to 1300, they barely existed, but they're exponential. Uh, science build on science, build on science, build on science. Uh, so they eventually come to be the driving force of society because the number of farmers and stuff is, could only increase with the population size. Uh, they don't build on all the farmers historically. Um, today, although we aren't quite there yet, it's easy to imagine a few farmers farming all the land, uh, extending their reach with automation and sensors, or even no farmers, just machines, and more machines to fix the machines. But the machines would still be in group two. Group two is the basis of, uh, of any economy. So I, I kind of wrote this blog post just while I was uh, playing around. I went on the... Um, I went on bls.gov and I looked at the top 30 jobs and I made a little spreadsheet. Uh, and I, I classified them. I'm like, okay, which of the jobs are group one, which are group two, and which are group three? Uh, so group one turned out to be most of the jobs, um, which I guess, I mean, isn't surprising given what I know about the modern economy, but I think it would be surprising to somebody in the past. Uh, so I broke it down into three subgroups. Um, the top four jobs are movers of stuff. Waiters are movers of stuff. Retail are movers of stuff. Drivers, movers of stuff. Clerks, like information clerks. I'm shocked. Four million people are information clerks. Like they, they do like, what, they have a filing cabinet? Um, you need the first group for societal uh, harmony. I'm, I'm not sure about any of that. Uh, what is this nature article? Is this nature or is this like, why does it have a trash news? Well, looks like trash news. Um, I found teachers somewhat hard to classify as well. Uh, if you assume education works, they're group two, producing more productive people like a tractor maker. Uh, if education is really just daycare, then they're group one. Uh, we gave them the benefit of the doubt and included them in group two. Um, and we included computer occupations in group three, but I'm sure a lot of these fall under. Oh, I didn't break down the, the three groups of, of group one. So movers of stuff. Um, fighters of entropy, maids, janitors, doctors, nurses, you're fighting against entropy, natural order of nature is disorder, uh, and then bosses. Uh, and I'm amazed at how many of these people exist. Managements, executives, specialists, money managers, finance, sales. I mean, what is sales but trying to be someone's boss who you don't know? Uh, admins. 
Um, yeah, so so probably yeah, probably only a few most most education is daycare, but we, we put it in group two um, because otherwise it would look so incredibly skewed. Uh, so here I did um, all the minor jobs on BLS and I, I assigned them to each category, and this was the breakdown that I got. Um, so uh, money managers move money, yeah, sure. Uh, the bosses are well. I put bankers in group one because they they move money. I mean, like the kind of like, oh, I consult on the economy. Um, so seventy three percent of U.S. jobs are in group one. Uh, this is uh, I mean, this isn't good. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know how to like like drive this point home. This is not that complete of a blog post. My writing isn't that good. I haven't, I haven't written in a while. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting also that like, uh, the other thing that I was thinking about exploring here is that I think that the group one jobs in some ways are the only ones that can be, like the class of job can be automated. We could automate every truck driver, right? And there could be no more truck drivers. You can't really automate every farmer because farming is tool complete, right? What farmers do changes, but they're still effectively farmers. What truck drivers do or what teachers do, we, we, could, we could in theory automate this stuff entirely. Um, and the, the jobs in three are, I mean, that's kind of what Backspace is. Uh, yeah, like, like, and well, then, and then I think, you know, the movers of stuff, like, I can respect the movers of stuff, and I can respect the fighters of entropy. Uh, here's a whole class of people that I just cannot respect, and this includes, like, politicians. Uh, like, like, the, the, all the bosses, management, executives, specialists, finance, like, it's, it's all bullshit. Um, I originally called these the one BS jobs, but, you know, uh... Backspace got taken down, got taken down by who? It was canceled for, for threatening programmer jobs. Um, you can't assume services are inherently different from material goods. Yes, I can, because of this problem. Right, like you can say, okay, we're gonna export the services, but who are you exporting the services to? Right? We don't need any of these services. Um, fundamentally, like food and food production is is, Uh, th this gets into the philosophy of economics uh, more than anything else, but um, yeah. So that's my that's that's my blog post. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a sub stack. Should, should I make a should I make a sub stack and charge and only give it to subscribers? Um, Meaning's not my problem. They can go read. Who did they read? Who wrote Being in Time? Whoever wrote Being in Time, I hear that book gives you lots of meaning. Uh, anybody who can finish it has meaning in their life. Heidegger, yeah, this guy. Anybody who can read that book um, has, has, has meaning in their life. But I don't know. Uh, I don't like the blog post enough to publish it yet. Maybe I'll work on it more, but I probably won't because I'm a lazy piece of shit. So uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, but oh yeah, I kind of want to see this this same analysis done for China. Uh, is this is this breakdown uh, for China? It's similar to humans need not apply. You guys know I really like that video. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's that's what else I did today. And it's unclear that the, the movers definitely add some kind of value. Um, and I think there's the, I mean, you can even break movers down further into movers that are exploiting, movers that are up against the Pareto optimality of arbitrage and movers that aren't. Like a truck driver or a, like a, like a, like a freight shipper operator. Um, are probably exploiting economic arbitrage opportunities where nobody could argue the same thing for a waiter and a clerk. Nobody could argue that the, the, the cost of the hamburger, the hamburger costs much less when it's sitting on top of the little thing and then when the person brings it out, somehow it increases that much in value, right? It's not an arbitrage opportunity versus, 
you know, for, for, a, for a truck moving food into a city, it may be. Um, yeah, mining is kind of like a mover, too. Does group three try to make group one more efficient? I mean, the, the problem is I, I don't really know how you measure the productivity of group one. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they, again, it's all, it's, all, it's all very tentative. Um, but you can very clearly see how to measure the productivity of, of the second group, right? How many ores, how many tons of ore per person can a miner extract? And that's skyrocketed during the Industrial Revolution. Um, how many acres can a single farmer cultivate? Uh, how many, how many uh, uh, tons of corn can we get from a single acre? Um, so, yeah, I mean, maintenance, I, I grouped all of construction in group two, which probably includes some maintenance as well, but maintenance somewhat falls under this fighters of entropy. Um, what do I think the optimal ratio is? I, I don't know. Um, I mean, optimal to what? It, it, it probably already kind of is optimal. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it is optimal under, under some, I don't know, unless, unless there's some big distortion going on in the economy. Uh, but uh, group one jobs have been growing at the expense of group two. Uh, group one jobs do not contribute to money creation as a whole, and it's concerning to consider what will happen if this trend continues. We cannot have a worldwide economy of group one jobs, as just like the town, the whole world would end up going broke. Uh, no, you can't get a link because it's not published. Right, we are going to program on the stream. Uh, I'll show you the other thing that I was playing with too. Uh, this is more programming related. So there's this thing called Liquid Haskell, and uh, it has refinement types. Yeah, like like look at this here. I can let, let me do some refinement types. Uh, so I can say something like zero colon colon int zero equals zero, right? Um, and then I do liquid refine. Okay, and that type checks. Uh, now let's define what zero is. So I can say zero. Yeah, it's in it's in my it's in my refinement types book. And we're gonna try to play with refinement types a little in the uh, the thing we were writing. Ah, here we go. So I can say, I can make zero like a type. I can say type zero uh, equals v int v equals equals zero. Uh, so I'm defining what the, uh, uh, and then I can say here that like, you know, so I define zero as a type and I can say zero is of type zero. So now when I uh, type check this, it's fine. But if I try to set zero equal to one, well, it's going to complain because one is not a subtype of zero. Uh, so you can do this with functions too. Um, so like here's kind of a fun one. Uh, just because we did merge sort on the last stream. Here, here's the merge function. Uh, so we have like merge ys equals ys, we can give merge a traditional type signature, which is like uh, a, 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 right? It's just an array of, of type a, and that's polymorphic. Uh, we can do that. Um, and then if we get two arrays, neither of them are zero, we can take an element off of both of them. If x is less than or equal to y, we can say it's x colon merge x has y colon y s. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. so yeah, that's all beautiful. But what happens if I try to type check that? Um, it's complaining about that because I didn't give it an ORD type. So I have to talk about how A is ordered. But this is still within the realm of traditional Haskell. Okay. 
Now it's complaining about some kind of type mismatch. So let's try to give it a liquid type signature and see what happens. Well, first off, I'm still complaining about zero not being zero. Liquid type mismatch. Hmm. It's not a subtype of the required type. I'm not sure why. Tell it that I have to order this. Like that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so I don't know why it was was talking about that as a, oh, yeah, it was talking about that as a mismatch because I was telling it implicitly that it was decreasing on on length of s. So yeah, now if, if I tell it length of x s, it's now complaining about the termination check um, because x s isn't getting any smaller here because I've put uh, here. So liquid Haskell is actually checking that this function terminates. Um, and it's like cocked like that. So if I do that, um, it works. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you can like, you can define like all sorts of types like this too. You can define like, like an ordered list type. Here, this is insert. This is the type signature of insert, uh, just like an insert into a list function that proves. Um, let's, let's copy that one over. That proves that insert is actually doing. And oh, we didn't do this, but. Um, it proves that insert is actually doing uh, what insert uh, claims to do. Wait, this is an insertion sort. Um, that's not even what I was thinking. I thought it was just like insert, like a normal insert. Uh, I don't know what list on one is. Um, ah, a list whose contents are exactly x and the contents of y. List S is a list with elements S. Like you can, in the type signature, you can talk about what the um, output of the function is. For example, say you have an append function to an array, you can assert, we can actually try to do that if, if you guys are interested in this. Don't let me know, we'll, we'll talk about what it is and then let me know if you're interested. Um, we can show, we can write a append function to a list and then we can prove the property that the input list is equal to the length of the output list minus one. Uh, so you can check that your, your insert actually works right. Um, I think they have also something in here called like ORD list, uh, which is a type. I think I bookmarked that. Let's see, it's in this, it's in this other refinement types book. Um, or list. No, maybe not. But I was playing with the stuff and it was kind of cool. Yes, yeah, section of traditional computer programs. Uh, if he even prepared a test, no, you, you don't get a test. Um, but now you're going to get some questions about uh, refinement types and dependent types, too. Uh, so some of those are going to be on the test as well. Here, 
Here zero is a refinement type. Is natural numbers is a refinement type. Kind of, it's here. So this is this, this is this is a good, a good simple example. Uh, so this is going to pass. Uh, should pass. Specified type doesn't refine Haskell type for main pause. Mm -hmm. You have to say that pause has type int. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, but this is actually the wrong type. This doesn't include, normally when you have the positive integers, it's only uh, zero has to be strictly less than. So now it's gonna fail. Uh, now it's, uh, it's failing this uh, check. So if we remove zero, uh, the check goes back to passing. Oh, I saw. No, you just timed out. Uh, Debo MC, you're timed out again. Congratulations. Um, refinement? Uh, please, please stay on topic. I'm just gonna quickly time out everybody who says anything off topic. Like GPT-3, that's totally off topic to what we're discussing, it turned out. Um, what are your thoughts on cross-platform frameworks? It's not Q&A time, time out. Uh, no, it's not live. Um, it, it's Haskell, and then this is this framework on top of it called uh, you are so fucking power hungry. Suck my fat cock, George. Oh yeah. Oh, wow, that's a ban. Um, it's just timeouts for those people. Yeah, stay focused. Please stay focused. Um, Yeah, so these are refinement types and we can try to play with refinement types. It, it's kind of a, I don't exactly understand the difference. There was a stack overflow explaining the difference between refinement types versus dependent types. Um, the main difference is along two dimensions. Refinement types are restricted to decidable fragments so that verification and inference is completely automatic. Refinement types never need you to provide a manual proof. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure that's a function of the type system itself. So this, this liquid Haskell requires me to install uh, Z3. Um, so, I mean, it's using, it's using a SAT solver underneath the hood. In theory, can't you do that with dependent types too? One cannot use arbitrary functions as specifications. Yeah, so this, this seemed like a thing as well. Um, like, I, I guess my specifications have to be easily translatable to the SMT language. Uh, add block term GPT-3. Add block term Twitch chat. I should learn I should learn how to do this stuff. Hmm. 
I'll appoint moderators, consider a moderation type, ban users, Ooh, unique chat. Ooh, slow mode. Look at all this great stuff. Add blocked. Thank you. No, that didn't work either. Why should be a mod in my own thing? Yeah, does this include all the chat commands? It's like neatly laid out. Um, term. Uh, are we at least allowed to talk to others in chat? You want to socialize? No, time out. Um, Ooh, followers three months. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds like a good compromise. Cool. That's a good compromise. You have to be around for a while, and then you know you probably care more about getting banned for life. Uh, yeah, we got to get better about moderation. We're gonna have a nice. You're, if you're a subscriber, it's fine too. Um, yeah, this is thinking about backspace stuff, yeah. Blacklist, ban words, Twitch. Oh, I have to like go in, that's too much effort. Only if I could do it with, uh, yeah. That's too much effort. Take some time off stream and get Nightbot. Oh, I looked at this once and I thought their website was lame. Yeah, you get social credit score in chat. Okay. So this was my Lisp stuff from last time. We're gonna add in uh, defining a type for our environments. This declares env as an IO ref holding a list of strings that map to mutable list valves. That sounds okay. That seems reasonable. Um, since IO refs can only be used within the IO monad. Oh, I learned about monads. Oh, that's the other thing that I did. Um, category theory for programmers. Yeah, I went through. I went through the first chapter of this book. Um, and then I also read the chapters about monads. Uh, this book's really good. Um, like, I still think mostly category theory is, um, you know, like meaningless. But to be fair, I still don't know what the United Lemma is. And there's this like one lemma in category theory. And they're like, after you've studied category theory and meditated on it for many years, you can finally understand the Oneida Lemma. Um, don't, don't, what's a monad? It's just like a monoid product of, it's a, mono, it's a free monoid on the singleton set of endo functions or something. Um, oh, there's video lectures too. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been really, I've been really enjoying this, this, uh, this book. Good for the ones that I don't get. Yeah, monoid in the category of endo functors. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so, so I did that too. But so now I kind of know what monads are. But only kind of. 
Since IORS can only be used within the IO monad, we want to help our action to create an empty environment. We can't just use the empty list because all access to IORF must be. I definitely don't want to have to deal with the. Yeah, okay. So we're going to extend eval. Which we call here to just to just use um, m. This seems easy enough. Should be fine. Um, and then yeah, we want eval over here. Take in an env. Uh, for these, the env don't matter. I'm going to say the env doesn't matter for any of those because I don't think any of them it does. But we're going to need to get an env inside the REPL. Yeah, until quit run one. I don't have a run one. Read prompt eval and quit here until do I want to modify my until uh, yeah well I don't have a run REPL but maybe if I put null env like this why do a Haskell kind of explained monads yeah I can make the text a little bigger uh, and we're going to need this null null env constructor So yeah, I made that blog post instead of a test. Yes, I think I'm gonna have to modify until. Can I do that? Like until is gonna have to Take in that bound operator or something. Don't ask about the TMUX shit. Yeah, like you, yeah, you can like use them. Like you use the I/O monad every time you make a Haskell program. Um, oh, I saw something on Hacker News this morning where the guy said that he wrote Haskell for a long time, was disappointed, and then switched to Rust. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out why I can't shove the null end in like that. Oh, well, we're going to need end here. Just are like that. Okay. Couldn't match NYO. Oh man. So we're gonna we're gonna have to listen to a song. Uh, I'll try to get a live version so we don't have to we don't have to block it. Uh but yeah, I've been I've been listening to this song. <coughs> no, there's one with where they're like old. Yeah, 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 yeah it's this man. I watched you go, I saw my hand 
Now we have an M, so we should be able to like set variables. We're not here to talk about copyright. DBOMC, you know, honestly, didn't I time you out once? Yeah, the general theme of the chat should be functional programming. Uh, preferably related to what I'm doing, slightly off topic from there is okay. Um, this is good, as, this is a good book as well. Uh, yeah. The idea of mechanical reasoning fascinated people long before computers. Specific questions about the scope and limits of mechanization were investigated systematically in the early part of the 20th century. Um, it's a sad, terrible tragedy, you know, you can't, I mean, I don't know, you, what, that's one way to look at it. One way to look at it is the halting problem can never be solved. Another way to look at it is like, the halting problem can never be solved, we can never go faster than the speed of light. Um, with both of those things, like, it probably also seems like we're going to find cute little shortcuts around them, so it doesn't really matter. Um, where were we? Oh, no, that wasn't the book I wanted to bring up, though. I wanted to bring up Structure of Computer Programming. Yes. So we can test. Let's go to the examples here and see which ones we can run now. Yeah. So these expressions work. Oh, we have to make define work. Yeah, define size two. Um, so add and define. Adam var form. What do I mean by form? Equals eval m form bind to define var m var. All right, that's cute, but we got to also define define var. We didn't write any of this throws error stuff, so we'll put that up here by the environment. Best way to make money without selling out? Get timed out on my Twitch channel. Did you enjoy Ender's Game? Time out. Topic, stay on topic, boys. Best place to learn Vim. You guys are lucky you're subscribers and you just get timed out, you know? People pull this shit when they're not subscribers and I just ban them.
Can I time you out? You know what, Rooks? You're going to get timed out for a week because you asked. I don't know if that's how many seconds or in a week, but it seemed like a lot of seconds. Oh, now this looks complicated. Oh, well, first is bound. Oh, man, this all looks really tricky. Is bound. M var read io ref m. I don't like when they write it in this style. I'm like I'm confused by this. Turn maybe false const true. Look up var. Getting timed out for a year would make my day. You're just banned. Oh my god. Time out. Time out. What is your most unpopular opinion? I don't know if it's banning you, but you're banned. No, 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 no. I'm not setting up a separate channel for off-topic chat. You want to chat off-topic? Go anywhere you want on the internet. Go, go, go on 4chan, man. Go on 4chan, you know? I feel like if we just did this, is this, okay, let's, let's talk about this. Is this a procedure that would work? What if everybody who made off topic comments just got banned? Like, I don't have that, like, like if, you know, look, if I was one of those streamers who had like 10,000 viewers, this wouldn't work. But with like a thousand viewers, okay. Probably only like 200 talk and chat. We ban half of them. It's better. I don't want to just play with this environment thing like somewhere else. It seems like there's a lot of complexity here. But like I don't I don't really understand. Let's 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 just play with the environment in a separate uh, in a separate Haskell. Maybe we can even make a module. I wouldn't ban good viewers. I'd ban viewers who talk about off-topic shit. Are they good viewers? I don't think so. I think they're bad viewers. If you don't have anything on topic to say, don't say it. All right, let's just write a little. Let's, because I, I want to understand these, these environments. Um, is this really the best way to write this? Maybe, maybe it is best to just write it in here. I mean, the rest of the thing's not very complicated. It is decently factorized out.
you didn't write define var. This is so complicated. return some kind of error. Well, no, this actually has to return a list val. Well, I guess so define returns the value itself. Okay, that's not bad. Um, okay, so already defined. use env down there and up here they call it mvref. I don't know. I don't like that I'm copying and pasting code. I don't quite understand. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to come back and we're going to copy it, then test it, and then we're going to rewrite it until we understand it. Okay. Lift IO does something. Value ref equals new IO ref value. Env equals read IO ref env ref. Write IO ref return value. Oh, and like set var is a separate thing here. already defined this guy is not even in scope Import something for this demo. Let me see what the import is. Is it this? Okay, cool. Have get var and set var. Do env lift io read io ref. I think the ref is because like I'm like passing it into a monad or something. Um, we are not writing it with any errors. So inside the do, we'll say that. Expected do block. I don't think that's right. Okay, lift IO dot. Set var needs to return an IO lisp val as it's mutating the environment. Hmm. I see what you're saying. 
That doesn't look good for me though. Well, let's, let's try a simpler definition of defined var where we just ignore the case where it's already defined. And then uh, variable assignment will only uh, will only work. So let's just get rid of this. Uh, like that. We should be able to make define var work. I guess I really have no idea what what uh, lift IO does. What if I just do that? So here's kind of a question. Oh, definitely that. But you're right, I think the last one might be IO. It has to return an IO list value. Match type. Yeah, so then eval is also going to have to return an IO list value. I guess is okay. But now it's complaining about all those things. Oh, because do I have to return Val? Because it's now in a monad? Oh, lame. Lame. Lift.io allows regular functions to act on IO values. So you're saying if I lift.io, I don't need that? Can I, can I do that? And then I can get rid of the IO here? I don't want that IO. But yeah, like if it's modifying the environment, I, I can't see how I would get around that. Like it has to be in the, it has to return the IO monad. If somehow it doesn't return the IO monad, um, then how does it actually modify it? Yeah, I could just unsafe perform IO. <laughs> no, no, no. We're writing good code here. Good code. Um, oh. What? I'm returning there. I guess I don't even need to return anymore. Because it's all in IO. Oh, I want an IO show. I'm sure IO show is not a thing. Oh yeah, lift M. All right, we'll lift it into an M, fine. If I lift M show, and get rid of the return. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, now the only thing I'm not doing right is this one. And it's probably because I need to like lift it into the monad. Yeah, 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 map M, which we'll do it in the monad. No. I have to pass the monad to it or something? Oh, wait, maybe I just don't need a return anymore? Mm. Get rid of that one for now. Could not match expected type M with actual type M. Oh, that's just because I didn't capitalize that E. Cool. I 
I broke that, unfortunately. Yeah, we have to fix this one here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't really get this either. So what they're doing here is they're doing it in map M. like this and then like apply uh function to x could not match Type IO spell with actual type. Uh, reminder for the new people, please keep chat on topic. Uh, if you don't have anything on topic to say, don't say it. So I thought this was the same as doing this, but maybe it's not. You guys still don't really understand that notation. Uh, there's no X there. No, okay, no, it's complaining about the same thing. Oh, I just need to put a uh, apply in the monad too. And then that is the same thing as that. So we just make apply return an IO lisp now. Yeah, but now it's got other things to complain about. Hmm, they don't look like they change apply. Do I have to like lift Emmet or something? I remember writing Haskell like this before, never really understanding, just like sticking lift M stuff. Is it return? Sweet, Lambda man, nice job. Um, okay, that seems like it did something. Well, I actually also need to be able to get variables too. Um, We'll write. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm comfortable with it being an IO. IO, read IO ref. Um, look up. Right. Hmm. Okay, I have to break it out of the maybe. Or actually, I think I just have to apply this to it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to break it out of the maybe. Without throw error, because we don't believe in errors. Just say undefined here or something. Cool. 
pattern match is redundant. Um, what did I do? Oh, here, this. Mm, how is that different? Yeah, okay, I guess you can't do that anymore. Cool. Okay, now let's try the example from here. I'm, I'm excited that it's like a different book. Now I can type in define size two, and now I type size two. Yeah. Define size four. Size is now four. Wait, then why did it need to do something different? Yeah, I should look at type signatures more. I, I agree. I, I just don't really like, I don't really understand. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's look at the type signature for, okay, you're saying I should, like, I can look at the type signature for maybe, I, guess I can do this in like GHCI and type like that, yeah, um, okay, maybe B, A, B, maybe A gives a B. I mean, that's sensible. So this is of type B. Undefined is all the types. Actually, I can ask, what's the type of undefined? Type of undefined. Oh, it's undefined. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, GHC is the compiler. GHCI is like, you can get like an interactive uh, prompt to play with. Uh, I mean, this really, this is not a difficult stream to follow. I'm not a very good Haskell programmer. You're really not watching me do anything fancy here. You're watching me follow like a noob tutorial. Um, sometime when I, when I do like, like, like fancier stuff or, or thinking stuff, I don't expect anybody to follow along. But the reason I'm enforcing uh, on topic stuff is you guys can do this. It's, it's not that hard. Um, so this is a function that takes type A and goes to B, and this returns maybe A. Okay, that's very sensible. Um, Let me just text this girl and say, are we good for eight? We good for eight? Question mark. You don't really need the lift IO in there. You're right. You're cool. Um, we, I'll pay, I'm picking it off. Do I not need this lift IO? I hate the lift IOs. I think lift IO is stupid. Oh, sweet. None of the lift IOs you really need. Lift IO is only if you're in a monad stack. need any of them if you're not handling errors. Oh, they add so much crap to this example to deal with errors. Errors are dumb. Um, okay, we now have get var and define var. And I'm not sure why we need set var and why it's any different. Though I'm probably, uh, I'm probably leaking I'm, pro I'm probably leaking memories. Um, look at the type of F map. I don't really know what a functor is. That's in the category three book, so we should just look. Let's look. You're right. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta be better with types. Like, 
functors. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I will say this about functors. A functor is a very simple but powerful idea. A functor is just a mapping between categories. So it's like a function that goes from A to B. So if a morphism in F, a functor preserves the structure of a category. What's connected in one the maybe functor. Um, congrats. For telling me about Lyft.io, you're a moderator now. Uh, moderators come and go, VIP stays forever. VIP is only if you pass a test, but if you say something that's very on topic, you can become a moderator. You don't have to use your moderation powers, you can just sit there with the little sword next to your name and be happy. Um. Oh. Wait, so maybe is a functor. Yeah, 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 I've seen this before. Um, cool. Oh, we want to RL wrap this. Map is basically the same as FMAP, but for lists. See, oh, this is this is deep functional shit. Like FMAP. Like, I get what map does. So, so map, I can take a function which goes from A to B, is a list of type A, and it gives me a list of type B. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, well, so if I'm not handling errors, I still need to unwrap the maybe. Like maybe is a type, and if I try to pass maybe, if I try to like return maybe, it's going to be like, oh, that's a maybe type. You can't do that. I think there's a way to like hard deref maybe. I think there's like a like shortcut for maybe undefined. Um, maybe I can just search for it. No. Uh, F map is like yeah, from from just. I have to import something for from just probably. Okay, let's go back to here. And we're eventually going to run into why I needed set var and define var to be different but we haven't run into it yet, and we only do things when we actually need to. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, structure here. Okay, cool. Oh, now it's gonna be deep if functions work. So wait, first can I do this? I can do like times five size. Yeah, 10, all right, sweet. Define pi equals 3.14159. Yeah, remember when I made floats work? Oh, good thing I made floats work. Otherwise we'd have to go back and make floats work. Define radius 10 times pi times radius radius. No! It broke. <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's commit what we have. Um, I'm gonna get ignore liquid. I was trying to get it to liquid type check, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, we have m. There's a lot of map function. Map underscore. Oh, map 
them. Yeah, I, I like that's how they explain monads. It's like you have this like zero and you have an append thing. Well, no, those are monoids. And then monads are special monoids or something. I, I don't know. I didn't totally understand it. I tried. Um, I did like that the C++ void class was equivalent to the Haskell unit. Like I was like, that's deep. Um, and I'm starting to, I think I'm starting to intuitively understand, yeah, like why backspace won't work on Python. Um, and it's because like you can't get, um, you, you can't get, without typing, functions can do anything. And it's really hard to say that a function won't do something if you don't have a type. Um, take something as simple as like you have a class in C++ and uh, here. So um, like you have like a class in C++, right? Uh, and let's say I have a uh, int i uh, and I have some like, we'll just call it dref. Um, well, Uh, and dref uh, returns a sub i, right? So how do you reason about this piece of code, right? Like, or even worse, what if I have this? Or you know, yeah, we'll just we'll just set I uh, set I here, right? Um, so I can make this private, uh, and then I can put like an accessor. I could put like a like a set I method. It's so hard to reason about. I'll call that get and set. Like, prove to me that this function will never do anything weird. Well, in order to do that, you have to look at this set i function, and you can analyze all the possible setters of i. Uh, and I guess i is private, so this is strongly typed, right? If i was up here, all bets are off. Um, and that's actually because C++ is a pretty strongly typed language, right? If I write the same thing in Python, you know, uh, oh, actually, who knows my C++ code isn't defined? Who knows what's wrong with my C++ code? What did I do wrong? Uh, you're right, shouldn't be void get, that's a bug. What else is wrong with my C++ code? Uh, I less than or equal to zero, yup, there's another bug, congratulations. Who's got more? Uh, you don't actually need a public. I could do a public. We're only looking at one class, so there's no main. There's another bug. I is uninitialized, exactly. Um, so, I mean, this fixes it, but with I uninitialized, if I is uninitialized, uh, you can get, I mean, this is an exploit, right? Um, I can instantiate a class C. Uh, if I could figure out how to instantiate a class C and get it to land on memory that's already been initialized, uh, this is an arbitrary byte set anywhere in the program. 
Um, you're right, I checked the wrong eye. Wow, this code has so many bugs. You know, you write something tiny and you're like, holy shit, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong all over the place. Um, yeah. Versus like, like this is, this is supposed to be a simple class that just wraps um, this. All right, let's write a constructor for it. Uh, all right, and then this becomes even more Uh, shouldn't C also be unsigned char? Yeah, it should. We'll just make it. We'll just make it char. Right. Um, and then no, we're actually gonna have to set uh, like something like mlan mlan equals len. Oh, that's not the convention that I use. We should use the right convention. We'll say len equals len. Uh, and then do that. If I less than len. Is this correct? How is it possible that bad code gets past the compiler? Well, I don't see if anything compiles. Didn't like that I used malloc. What is it in? Stidlib.h? Is that going at the end of my class? Uh, no, what do I want here? Share? Okay, cool. Compiled. Bounds check and doesn't happen by the compiler. Well, so I mean, we could in theory add the bounds check to set and get. Yeah, um, but then like if these things were not private, uh, all bets are completely off. For example, there's no such thing as private. I was thinking about trying to build backspace on analyzing um, uh, size no read alpha O tool or something. Uh, useless, useless. the text section, not the data section. Print all text section. TV? One of these days I'll learn how to use O-Tool. Print all text sections. In malloc size of, well, yeah, I mean, theoretically, sure. I do know that char is one byte, so that's not a real, um, This not even this didn't even include any code. Fine, I'll write something that actually uses it. Oh, hold on, hold on, printf. Oh, gotta gotta include the shit for printf. Who knows what number it's going to print? Oh, of course, I have to construct it with a length. Um, it's optimized, right? Now we can O tool it. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, look at the mangled names. Let's let's uh, let's compile this with uh, OS. We can actually make readable code. Oh my God! <laughs> when you compile it with OS, it doesn't even have a class anymore. Uh, let's separate this into main.cc, and then shouldn't be able to optimize around that, right? Yeah, maybe you can. Unknown type name C. Class C? Oh no, this is gonna all oh, forward declaration. Oh, you need a forward declaration. Oh my god. Is this good enough or do I have to also include the private members? Set I as a private member of C. Oh, maybe I do need a public. Whoever said public, maybe you do need a public. You were right. She doesn't much C++ I know. Why did I put that there? Oh. Now it can't find that. Um, fine, wow, wow, did you really like me to write real code? Fine, I'll write real code. compile that with OS and it shouldn't be able to compile across files, right? Yeah, cool. Really? That's the best it can do? If it compile? I think, okay, maybe OS isn't good. Um, Clang plus plus Clang actually makes smaller code. Clang. Okay, well that was a lie about Clang making smaller code. This is bigger code. Stupid Clang. Maybe it's because I did O2 instead of OS. Oh yeah, O2, wow, it like aligns it or something. They both do it, wow. They generate almost identical. Oh, do I have, just G++, is, it's Clang. Stupid G++ is actually Clang. That one's actually G++. Segmentation fault? What? Why is it seg faulting? Not GDB? Oh, this is stupid. LLDB, oh my god. Memory read failed. Huh. Who trusts GCC anyway? This is why we use Clang. The compiler of choice that doesn't seg fault. Oh, Compiler Explorer, yeah, 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 I saw that. Uh, I mean, we can play with Compiler Explorer. I mean, it's kind of what we wrote here. Well, it's not that different from... Yeah, should we do should we do it on Compiler Explorer?
Well, they have everything in here. Clang. Compiler options, dash zero ass. Oh, this is so cool. Oh yeah, look, how come they made small one and mine is so big? Oh, it optimized. Oh, that's not good. I don't want it to optimize. Cheater. Just inline the shit. Add new. Hmm. Compiler. No inline. I want to probably get rid of that and then it doesn't inline. Yeah. Oh, this is so much nicer. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the question is, can you from this determine like anything? Uh, it's thrown away the type information by the time it gets here. Like, I guess from this, you can say, okay, it's private, so it's fine. Uh, Does go any better at this? Not really. But yeah, I mean, it all looks really hard to... Um, how can I, how can I make this not inlineable? Oh, that's, that's crazy, the amount of reasoning that it's doing. That should make it not inlineable. Uh, this will make it not inlineable. Yeah, you don't know shit. Wow, but it just inlined an access. Oh, see what it did? It just inlined an access to the, the internal class member. It didn't respect the private. You guys see, look, it didn't respect the private. I mean, this is a compiler, it doesn't have to, but none of it's real. This is a beautiful example of an optimizer reasoning that appears to disprove Maslow's theorem. Um, let's see what GCC makes. Now, GCC can't totally reason about it. It manages to optimize away get and set, but it leaves in the calls to set I. Which is a weird call to leave in when you think about it. Yeah, um, but my point is, like, I think I now understand on in a, in a like on a on a philosophical level, uh, not philosophical, but like like on a on a y you can't um, why you need types and what types are. Uh, which is something I didn't really understand um, all my years as a, as a Python programmer. Uh, because you just think of it as, as, as bugs. Um, 
Yeah, link the example. Sure, sure, sure. See, this is this is on topic. Like, if you're adding, he, here's here's another thing for like the on topic, off topic thing. If you're adding to a conversation that we're having, it's on topic. If you're trying to derail the conversation, or you're trying to, um, you know, ask about something that like you can Google, then it's off topic, and you know you shouldn't be talking. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Undefined behavior. Is there, is there a Fumas last theorem in here? <laughs> if I actually do this in Clang, you're telling me this works? I think we need more optimization. For most of us, theorem takes a long time. Oh, perfect. Endless loop with no side effects is undefined behavior. Why does it need this max stuff? I don't really get that. That's just to make the optimizer actually do it. Oh, no, no, no I see what's happening here. Um, oh, yeah, because you have to increment them. <laughs> I feel like there's a cuter way to write that. I don't know what it is, max. If A is greater than max, A equals one, B plus plus, but that's that's not only gonna loop. No, 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 this doesn't disprove from Ma's last theorem. This only disproves from Ma's last theorem up to 1,000. This code is a lie. Um, what's the correct way to like increment three variables and iterate through all of them? It's like a right way to do this. Uh, I can say like, yeah, for B equals one, B less than or equal to A, B plus plus. This does it. No, but there's still, there's gonna be some unreached value there. I mean, it, 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 it's a joke about compilers, but the code is wrong. Um, how do you increment three variables and get them to see every possible number? Like, there's like walks that can do this. You know what I'm saying? Well, so how do you walk two numbers? Do you want to go? You want to go like outward in a spiral? I mean, okay. I, I guess there's a really naive way to write this. That wastes some compute. I, I don't know. I, I feel I feel dumb not being able to come up with that, but like this definitely works. Broken. But that will definitely walk through all the numbers, but it'll also check ones that it's already checked. Uh, so how do I avoid ones that it's already checked? I mean, maybe that outer thing with A actually does work. Uh, let's think, is this going to go to every possible number? Well, no, it's not. 
Because what about like, um, well, this will go to 311, so that's fine. Yeah, this will go to every number. This is fine. I, I don't know why I thought it was a problem. That will definitely reach every number. Will it see any number more than once? Uh, no, but actually, no, no, no. There are things this will never go to. This will never go to, for example, 122. Two. Yeah, it won't go to 122. Two. You're right. Um, how do I do this? Define max as an iterative iterator and call next at the end. I'm just trying to... It's true. It does say it's been disproved. That's right. That's a good point. Um, 122 is equivalent to 211 uh, for, for Ma's last theorem. Uh, no, it's not. Um, I agree that B and C can be swapped for addition being commutative. Um, oh, I guess, yeah, no, it's not equivalent to 211. How do you, how do you like iterate up all the numbers? Let's, let's just think about a spiral, right? So I can go to like zero, zero. Uh, I can go to like zero, one, one, one. Now I want to go back. Infinite descent. Yeah, like the, the proof thing. Is this, is this related to that? Um, so that's going up, over, down. Uh, we'll go down again, go over, go over again, right? Like this is a... Or let's just say I want to iterate the, the normal numbers. Uh, so if you like that diagonal, that diagonal, that, if I want to iterate the 2D plane. What's a, what's like a, what's a, what's a 1D space filling curve for the 3D plane? Space filling curve. Maybe this problem isn't so trivial. Or I'm just missing something stupid. The max thing works. It just checks things that it's already checked before. Um, which ones has that already checked? Well, okay. So for the max thing, we just would want to start one of them. We start any one of them at max. That should get everything. Let me think of that as any duplicates. I heard a, uh, I forget whose quote it was, but the quote was that programming languages um, are designed to be languages of thought. And I thought that was really, uh, that was really deep. Um, so this definitely works. But in order to avoid any repeats, yeah, no, it's not easy. Yeah, diagonals was the right idea. Yeah, but what is a diagonal? I mean, sure, I, I understand how to write this in 2D space. But how do I write this in 3D space, right? In 2D space, I can just write it like, um, yeah, I can get like all the pairs that sum to five, right? So for, for 2D space, if, if I want to do a space filling curve for 2D, uh, I can say something like um, int sum equals zero uh, while one uh, for i uh, int i uh, equals zero, i less than sum, i plus plus, uh, and then the pair is, um, let's see, let's see if this works. Uh, let's see some, uh, I might, no, 
So we say i comma sum minus i. Yeah, so that should get that should get all the two pairs, right? Why would you always want to include one, two, two? A always has to be bigger than B. Yeah, no, I know. But I'm I'm just trying to say uh I'm just trying to say like like how do how do I extend that to 3D space? Um, well, first, a quick proof that that actually covers all of all of the like first quadrant and two D space, all of the all the positives. Um, I mean, every every point in two D space has to be the sum, and we're iterating it through sums. You can do the dumb approach of counting with an ever increasing base. Uh, it would suffice with 2D space, but how do I write this? How do I write this in, in 3D space? Uh, power sum. You need the constructive method to confirm. Yeah, it's kind of exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, proven number system with three components is countable. Is there a link for that? Hilbert curve halfway down the page. So, okay, I was right about Hilbert curves. I see the Hilbert curve in 2D space, and is that what I had? Oh, this is this is fancier. Wait, but I have to like predetermine a depth. Can you do the 2D space, but add to every pair the third number via loop? Yeah, but the problem with that is what do I count the third number up to? Right, and I don't think it's the Hilbert curve either. We're, we're just trying to do the integers. This, you're telling me this does it. Make sure we iterate through all positive conversations of A, B, and C. Okay, let's just um let's just print that and see if it looks right. Well, I think when we can code. What? 
No, this is just, this is stupid. This is just wrapping around on the integers. Don't give me that bullshit. I don't know how I didn't just read that and be like, no shit, that's wrong. No, this is correct for 2D. Iterate over the sum of the three points. Okay, okay, yeah, that might work. Yeah, so I, I think that's right. I think if, if I iterate over the sum, because it's definitely true that any of them are gonna have a sum and we wanna find all the combinations uh, that sum to that value. Um, yeah, 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 this is, this is easy, this is easy. You're right, you're right, you're right. It's totally what you do. Uh, for int a equals zero, a less than, a less than or equal to sum, a plus plus. Um, yeah, so we'll call it uh, L sum equals sum minus a. Um, and then we can just copy and paste this, uh, except this is only gonna go to L sum. This should do it, right? Uh, it missed one. Why did it miss one? Those don't sum to zero. Um, oh, oops. Zero, that. Does that get everyone? Let's just pick a random one. We'll just do like grep six, three, seven. Get six, three, seven. Uh, 126, 31, seven. Yeah, it gets that. Cool. I think that's good. Space filling curve in 3D, boys. Was that trivial? Should I just have known that? Was I dumb for not knowing that? Mm. Mm. It's raining. I don't know if my date's gonna happen. Jeez, there's no, uh... Let's just go back and let's get that example working and then I gotta go. But it was a good stream, boys. Let's figure out just why that example doesn't work. Non-exhaustive function, oh, and unpack num, and it's just because, yeah. Yeah, because you can't, sorry, multiplying floats doesn't work. Um, does defining functions work? Mm, I'll merge a pull request if somebody gets floats to work. Uh, and actually, let's just check this. Does this work? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, because you can't just define. I mean, this might work, but I don't know what that's going to do. Mm, I don't know. Sounds like it's an extreme thing. Uh... I gotta go shower. I gotta go floss. Uh, thank you for watching tonight's stream. Uh, I'm hoping to be a Twitch partner. Uh, so if you guys know anyone at Twitch, I don't really care that much. Uh, but I don't know. Actually, you know what I do care about though? A blue check mark. If you know anyone on Instagram, I legitimately want a blue check mark. Uh, and I, I'd be willing to trade my copy of White Noise for a blue check mark. I will mail them. If you know someone on Instagram, I will mail them this copy of this book. It's a really good book. Um, it's, it's, it's nicely like laid out, you know. Now you guys can ask whatever questions and nobody gets banned. 
DM you for a blue check mark. You can actually give me a blue check mark. I would deeply a blue check mark would improve my life. Um, a yeah. So no, I'm not. I don't know. Maybe we'll stream again tomorrow. But we're gonna be reading this book, and that's what we're gonna be doing. Maybe instead of streaming, reading this book. Uh, Isaiah the goat. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, is Kira usable with interpreted languages? I mean, you can use it, but not not really. Uh, I will read books stream. <laughs> Why is Jonathan a sellout? Uh, this book has great conversation about death. Yeah, it's pretty common. I've had a lot of people have read it. I just never read it. Um, I coded my thing in C. I just, I don't know why I didn't think of, it's obviously it extends from the second dimension to the third. And that is a proof that tree tuples are countable numbers. Uh, Camus. I read The Stranger. Uh, I was kind of, I don't know, I don't like it that much. This is a long time ago. Don't actually read Being in Time. I haven't read Being in Time. Telling people to read Being in Time or Critique of Pure Reason only exists for trolls. I don't think anyone's actually read either of those books. Um... You should read Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment's easy to read. You can read those. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about crime and punishment. Two things. If you want to consider yourself a serious intellectual, you have to have contemplated suicide and have a reason why you don't do it and have contemplated being a criminal and have a reason why you don't do it. A lot of people just go through life and they keep living and not doing crime and they haven't really thought about the opposite. And then you haven't really explored all your options. Cons and I, 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 I read, I, like, I, I sat and I looked at each word and I tried to read Critique of Pure Reason. I just, I just couldn't. Um, let me say that because Crime and Punishment was brought up. Three month follower chat's pretty nice. Start following today. One day the three months will be you. Um, no, like you can be evil. Just don't go around saying don't be evil and then take it away and then like be like, oh, but we're still not evil. We just don't say it anymore. No, that's, you can be an asshole. You just can't be a hypocrite. Uh, yeah, tonight's a new day. This is the first date. Um, oh, Casino Odyssey and Cyberspace. That's a good, that's a good read. Absolutely. I reread that recently. Did, did I, did I mention that on one of my streams? Uh, there is only but one true serious philosophical problem, and that is suicide. I, I like that. Um, CMKY Grayscale, thank you for subscribing. Do the August Leak Code Challenge. If Leak Code is fun, I'll do it. But if it's for fucks who want to like, oh, I want to know Leak Code so I could pass my Fang interview. Well, you know, I don't care about you. Um... <laughs> What does it mean to be beaten mentally? I'd definitely rather be beaten mentally. Um, guys, coronavirus is a cold. That's where it goes, overdose on heroin, I don't know. I think there's better ways, but we're not going to discuss suicide methods. Uh, yeah, metamorphosis is a primary elect. That whole, that whole, the whole world is quite good. Uh, do I have a simple explanation of JIT? Only because you just subscribed. You ever run Clang on a program? It's like if there was a little Clang inside your program that just runs on pieces of it as you go. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. No, I don't know that book. Uh, hypoxia seems like a better way to go than heroin. I agree with that. 
Um, just do the lead code contest for fun. They're only on Saturdays in the evening, less than two hours. Yo, I would like, I'd like to flex for a minute just so you were like, oh, well, George, George doesn't do it because, because, uh, you know, yeah, you can't do it. Um, look at Advent of Code and look at the leaderboard. Bros, 21st, and I like missed half of them too. Um, I know a whole bunch of the people, like I know a whole bunch of the people up here too. And like some of them are, yeah, they're actually better than me. Um, so I'm not saying, I'm not saying it was unfair. It was a very fair contest, but like I could have been more on top of like doing it every night and stuff. And then I probably could have moved up maybe to like 13th. I don't think, I don't think I can beat those people. Um... Yeah, yeah, well, some of them, some of them I know personally. Some of them I know because they're famous. How happy am I with this apartment? Yo, there's construction. There's construction. I'm upset, and I complained. I sent an email complaining, and if I don't get a complaint, I'm gonna, I'm gonna anti-shill for this company on stream. I'm gonna tell people I'm a Twitch partner. Um, <laughs> uh, no, look. I don't know, competition programming, like once it becomes like a thing, it's like their thing, you know? It's like, it's like bug bounties. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. we'll see. We'll see if it looks, if, if the contest looks fun, we'll do it. Uh, I'm not, I don't, I didn't complain to the city. No, I complained to the people who I rented the apartment for, I want a discount. Um, no, I'm not IRL streaming my date. I, I gotta go. Thanks all for watching. Uh, I'll be back on at some point for my 12th stream. And 12 streams means Twitch partners, Twitch. You know, you know. All right, bye-bye.